This is Tom Bernanke. Today I'm going over the top eight ways to stop back of the heel rubbing. So if you have back of the heel pain and rubbing in your dress shoes, in your high heels, in your skates, or your other hard shoes, this is the guide that's gonna solve it for you. There's a lot of disorders that can cause this, and 95 plus percent of them don't need any surgery, they don't need anything expensive, and you can start fixing it pretty quickly and pretty easily, and I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. So the things that can cause back of the heel pain are number one, something called a Hagelin deformity or a pump bump. This is when you actually have prominent bone on the back of your heel that rubs against your shoe. If you think you have a Hagelin deformity and you want to learn more about it, click this link. We go over the treatment and why it happens in detail. Number two, if you have swelling at the back of your heel, so if you think it's the swollen skin, this is called bursitis. A bursa is a sack of soft tissue that's supposed to cushion your Achilles tendon and heel bone. So when you see this Achilles tendon right here, there's a sack of tissue that sits, that's the fat, and there's a fluid filled sac that prevents the Achilles tendon from rubbing against the bone. That's called heel bursitis. And we go over that in detail, the causes and how to make it go away right here. And the third most common thing is there's more, but this is the third most common due to limited links on YouTube is Achilles tendonitis right here. If you have the pain above the heel bone, so if it's two to six centimeters above the heel bone, that could be your Achilles tendon. If it takes you a few steps in the morning, get warmed up, if you're really sore and stiff, that's Achilles tendonitis. I could talk about that all day, and the link is right here. I do talk about it all day, and I give you all the solutions, the practical home advice to fix your problem, right there. So we're starting the top eight countdown. So number one is you wanna get yourself an orthotic. The reason heels rub against the back is because they bend up and then they twist up and twist. So watch this. When you land on your foot, most people twist out a little bit. I'm exaggerating it, but that up and twist, the back of your heel is rubbing against the shoe. You know what stops that? A low cost orthotic. Watch this. When I grab this and I push down, see how it's not pushing? It's not sliding. Whereas watch this, when it lands on an unsupported surface with less support, see how it bends out? that bending is twisting your heel against the back of the shoe. So that brings us to number two. You want to cushion that twist. An easy solution is right here, duct tape. If you're getting a blister, so for example, your high heel like this, you want to grab some tape. You can see I'm having a hard time here. There we go. There's my tape. You grab that tape and you put that tape on the back of your heel. So that tape, you can see, this is the bone model, but if you grab it here and put it on your skin, that's gonna give you a thick layer of protective skin. Everybody has tape at home. Maybe not duct tape, but some type of tape. You can glue it onto the back of your heel. Don't do this if you have skin problems. If you have blisters already, don't use the tape, but you can stick it back on there. When I see marathon runners, for example, get blisters on their heel, if you know you're gonna get one during the marathon, put the tape on there and it's gonna rub against the tape rather than your skin. It gives you extra protection. Number three, get yourself a thick pair of socks. You could even put on two pairs of socks. So you can get a long compression sock. So I love compression socks. And then a sock like this over your compression socks. And then you could even have a layer of tape under there. So that's three layers of protection. Your heel's gonna do great. Number four is this. What is this? This is a gel pad. So watch this right here. See what I'm doing right here? You can see on a bone model, it's hard to put on, but see what's going on here? This is for women in high heels. It's skin colored. You got lots of gel here. It's padding the back of the heel. It fits better onto skin. This is just a bone model, 
but it stops the rubbing on the back of your skin. So that's way number four. I got a whole pack of these. This costs pennies. So in the links, you can get this thing. It'll really pad you up. This is more for if you can't wear socks. It's a fake sock that will cushion you and it won't look weird. Number five, you want to get a good pair of shoes. So look at this. If you have to wear high heels or dress shoes, it's gonna rub. You can do the socks, you can do the cushioning, but if you can get a good shoe, look at it, it's nice and supportive. It's, it's supportive through the bottom, so your heel's not twisting and rubbing in the back. So what happens is you can also fit an orthotic into shoes like this. So the orthotics in here, your heel's not rubbing as much. That's number five. Number six, go to a cobbler. So what a cobbler can do, a cobbler can basically change the back of your heel. They can add some cushion, they can, uh, do, they can cushion it in the back. What's better than a cobbler? Look at this. These are called moleskins, or you can put cushion in the back of your heel. This comes with glue. You simply uh, remove the sticky pads in the back, and look at that. You just glue that in there, and it's cushioning the back of your heel. So links are at the bottom, but this little device right here, it sits in the back of your heel, and it provides a lot of cushion to the back. So I already have this guy on here, and then you can put that in the back. That's more for women in high heels, or you could put that in dress shoe. A cobbler can do that for you, or you can do that for you. This one I don't really recommend personally as it could ruin your shoes, but if you have leather shoes, suede shoes, a, a fancy material, put your heel in there or put something firm in there and use a hair dryer. A hair dryer can warm up the back of the heel and it just makes it soft. You can see I don't have any high heeled shoes. My wife won't let me demonstrate, so I'm not gonna do that, but you get the idea. Just warm it up and the back will be softer and it'll help you quite a bit. And lastly, I've run out of numbering, but I think I'm at the end. Stretching and exercise. If you get your Achilles tendon more flexible, your foot will feel better. So the beauty of stretching, you can see right here, I don't have a shoe on. The back of my heel is gonna hurt. But when I get a good shoe and a good orthotic, you can test it with a device like this. You don't need to waste money and buy this thing. But right now I go from a lot of heel pain to zero heel pain. Look at that, that's absolutely no heel pain. And the beauty is at the same time, while I stretch, I can get a nice calf stretch. My plantar fascia from my heel to my toes is stretching. Getting a more flexible Achilles tendon and a more flexible plantar fascia can work wonders. So two things are happening there. I'm stretching and a stretch block. Take a look at this thing right here. With shoes, with your feet turned in, I love how much flexibility I get through the calf muscle, through the plantar fascia. I get this in my kitchen counter and I stand in front of it for five minutes, maybe just a minute or two even. That works wonders on taking all the pressure off the back of your heel and the bottom of your heel. So there's a lot of stretching devices. This one right here is a hamstring stretcher. That's a great device. I'm gonna show you how to use that right here. It just spliced together some footage, but this holds your foot up, it holds your knee straight, and you just lean back on it. I do this while I watch Netflix for a few minutes at the end of the day with my wife. She hates this thing because it takes up a lot of room in front of the TV, but you want to have it in a place where it's going to be a habit. 